Today we're back at the Science Cave and we're going to look at energy transfer and we're going to look at three basic ways to transfer energy. The first one is conduction. Conduction, probably the best example is when you touch something that's hot. When you touch something that's hot, you know, you know, when we were all kids, we touched something that was hot and all of a sudden, you know, we got burned. So really what you're thinking of here with conduction, you're having collisions of molecules. Collisions of molecules. I'll write it down here. Of molecules. You know, one thing is touching another. I think we're all pretty familiar with that. The second one is convection. When you think of convection, it's actually a transfer through circulation or flow of uh, liquids or liquids or gases, typically. So you've got a circulation, circulation, and we're thinking gases or liquids here. Probably one of the best examples when you start thinking of this, start thinking of this, is uh, oh, when you're boiling, let's say you're just boiling a pot of water. Let's say we got some water in here, and we bring a different color here. Let's see what we can do here. And you've got, the, got a flame down here, and what we have is the hot water flowing to the top, so this would be the hot and then the cold water sinks to the bottom. Uh, and again, the cold water's got a little bit greater density. And so you have this circulation going on here, and this is a convection current. Uh, this becomes very important when we start talking about the formation of clouds. But it's really a, the flow of energy through a, a liquid or a gas. And so we have the, uh, so it can either be through a gas or a liquid. The uh, third type of energy transfer is radiation. If you ever sat around a campfire at night and you know you're a little bit away from the campfire, you're putting your hands out to get warm, and they get warm, well that's the radiation or the flow of energy. And uh, typically when we're talking about this, we're going to talk about solar radiation. And with radiation, solar radiation, that can actually go through a vacuum. So the heat from the sun can go all the way through space, that one astronomical unit, about 93 million miles, and it can go all the way through a vacuum and reach the Earth. And that's how the Earth gets warm, especially the surface of the Earth. And that's so through radiation. So the three basic processes are, are conduction, where you're actually touching, you have that collision of molecules, convection, uh, again, through a liquid or a gas, you know, typically we think of a hot material rising and the cold falling, and then radiation, uh, when we think about from the sun. Now, one thing, when you start talking about the sun, is that here we got a, a diagram of the sun's, what's called its energy budget. So if we got incoming radiation from the sun, some of this is going to get reflected by the atmosphere, some is reflected by the clouds, and some is reflected from the Earth's surface. But the majority of the, of the sun's energy gets absorbed by the land and the oceans. Well, as we talked about in class, we know that the troposphere heats from the bottom up. What happens is, as this energy is being absorbed by the ground, after a while, it's going to get re-radiated. And so we're looking at the troposphere here. Troposphere, let's see if it's all going to fit in here. It might not. And we know it heats, we talked about this in class, heats bottom up. Well, as the 
sun's energy strikes the earth and you know you think about if you've ever been to lake michigan during the summer you start walking on the sand it gets pretty darn hot well it's absorbing the sun's radiation so it strikes here gets absorbed and then it gets re-radiated back into space and here it kind of breaks down into what percentages get back and uh, what percentage is absorbed by the atmosphere uh, radiated directly into space I'm not really interested in the percentages at all the key thing here to remember is that the Sun's radiation that gets absorbed by the land and also by water will get eventually will get re-radiated into space and that really is what drives weather so weather like all things you know, it's really dr is driven by the energy from the sun. You know, the sun is the ultimate ultimate source of energy for everything here on Earth. Well, we'll leave it here at that. You know, as you as usual, you know, if you got any questions in this, uh, don't be afraid to ask questions in class. And uh, just trying to keep things really to the point on this. So this is uh, this is it for this particular lecture.